What If It's Cool is proudly brought to you by Respo Clothing. Feel like a champion by wearing the merch from all the stars, including Luke Resner, B Squared, Savannah Rowe, John Stop Action, Nova Nichols, The Cooters, and my personal favourite, Conflict Axiom. So feel like a champion by checking out Respo Clothing. They can be found on Facebook and on Instagram. Adrenaline Pro Wrestling presents Breakout 43, happening on July 12th at the Adrenaline Zone, featuring the upcoming stars of Adrenaline Pro Wrestling. Check the link in the description. Make sure to check it out. Alpha Pro Wrestling presents Ruthless, happening on Saturday, July 13th at the Pipework Market. Ticket link is in the description. Make sure to check it out. And Nate Hunter is a virgin. Before you check out Ruthless, make sure to also check out Alpha Pro Wrestling's Energy 6, also happening at the Pipework Market at 12pm, featuring the heaviest match in Australian wrestling history. Entry is only $2. Make sure to check it out. It's time to prepare for war as MXW presents Battle of the Border, happening on July 20th at the Sets Mildura. Ticket link is in the description. Make sure to check it out. Renegades Wrestling presents We Choose Violence, happening on Sunday 28th of July at the North Hill Theatre. Ticket link is in the description. Make sure to check it out. Mayhem Pro presents Showcase Road to Relentless Rumble 3, happening on Friday, August 9th. Ticket link is in the description. Make sure to check it out. <laughs> Anything and everything that is cool in the world today. I wasn't an artist, but I was a former singer, former actor, and now podcaster, Daniel Paul Pro. And with me is somebody who I've been wanting to have on the show pretty much since day one since we started doing the interviews. A guy that was an artist, he still is an artist, can moonwalk, can dance, can play the trumpet, can do pretty much anything because he's fing talented himself. Rocky, how are you, bud? Hey, ladies and gents of what if it's cool? Um, yeah, I'm uh, absolutely wrapped to be here, and uh, and yeah, r- uh, really cool that uh, that you finally got the artist on. Yeah, uh, yeah. It's, t- only, t- it's, only, take, it's only taken two and a half years, but yeah, we got there at the end. <laughs> hey, it's a, it's worth it's all worth the wait. Yeah, I know. Now, lucky, I want to firstly bring up something because uh, it only recently just happened. I don't know if you announced on social media, but it is known that you and uh, Elaine Hope are um, an item. And mm-hmm. I want to firstly congratulate you both on your engagement. Um, I want to talk about that that relationship soon, but I want to, all I want to say is about f***ing time um, <laughs> that, you, that you guys are finally engaged. Congratulations. Ah, uh, thank you. It was a, uh, it, it was, um, it, it was truly a magical evening, and I'm abs- And the main thing that I'm absolutely wrapped about, apart from obviously. Uh, Elaine Hope saying yes was just that uh, was being able to keep the uh, the element of surprise because I am a I'm a sucker for a good old cliche especially when it comes to this sort of thing and uh, and it all came with a spectacular outcome. Yeah, well, um, actually, we'll get we'll get into it later. I was going to say you, you, you want to tell the story of like how it came about. We'll, we'll do that later because uh, I saw the I saw the video and I saw the, the images and um, wow, uh, when I when I eventually get engaged. Um, I want to do something very similar to that one, but uh, by the time I get engaged, uh, the Harry Potter thing will be long gone. Now, Lucky, firstly, I want to ask you, how did you discover wrestling? Not getting in the industry, but how did you actually discover it itself as a whole? Probably, uh, probably like uh, probably like most people, really. I uh, I ended up discovering pro wrestling at a at a really young age. I don't exactly remember ha- uh, how or or when. I just remember that I was really really young at the time. Probably before I could even remember, I, I was probably watching a little bit of Hulk Hogan with um uh, with some family. I mainly remember, um, I mainly remember the video games where, uh, um, uh, when I was probably about eight or nine or, or or something like that. Especially with the old PlayStation One games like uh, SmackDown, and SmackDown Two, Know Your Role, and No Mercy. So th- this is a this is Lockie just showing his age here uh, on that one. But um, hey, at least uh, at least you're not like me if you remember Super Super WrestleMania. Far out. That's how old I. <laughs> yeah, and uh, and then uh, and then eventually uh, I kind of um I kind of ended up seeing uh, some uh, some Monday Night Raw and a little bit of SmackDown here and there on the uh, on good old Optus TV uh, before uh, before my family uh, ended up getting Foxtel. Uh, where I was able to watch um, pro wrestling a lot more regularly, but then there was some good older VHS tapes 
um, that, I, that I used to watch on repeat over and over again, like uh, Stone Cold's Hell Yeah. Um, oh, how great was that video? That was great back in the day. Especially with how they would, uh, especially the highlight packages that that, uh, that they produced back then as well. They, they just did a fantastic job of um, t uh, telling all the stories that were going on at the time and then even getting Stone Cold Steve Austin's uh, commentary on what was going on ar around that time as well. Mm. And, um, and, there was a, and there was a doco... Um, that, that I used, uh, that I used to watch a lot back then, which kind of uh, I guess gave most uh, I guess a lot, whoever watched it uh, kind of an inside look on the business um, and all that jazz. I, uh, what was it called? Beyond the Mat. And you like that single handedly changed my my view of the wrestling industry as a whole because like I I'm from that age where Jake the Snake Roberts was at times more scary than the Undertaker. Because most of us kids were very scared of uh, snakes and everything, but the fact that he never screamed or got racing voice, he just harsh voice like that, very soft spoken. That's more scarier than a, a dead man or a rattlesnake or anything like that, because you can't, you don't know what 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 the next move is. And, uh, and seeing him go down that route and everything, oh god, it's it changed. But also like seeing like. I don't, I don't know about you, Lucky, but for me, it was like the first exposure of ECW, too, because I never heard of it at that point. Obviously, WCW, WWF at the time uh, were the two big ones here in Australia. Um, and just even finding out there was local wrestling, too, I never, I didn't even know that. I thought it was all just one big click, to be honest, and that was the, the movie that really spoke to me. I probably would have been uh, would have been the same for the longest amount of time. Like, I was always a... Uh, uh, I, was a I was a WWF, WWE kid, uh, pr pretty much through and through, and um, I didn't actually, uh, I didn't really know that there was any <clears throat> any local wrestling till maybe when I was in high school. But the first show I actually ever went to was uh, New Age Wrestling Steel Resolution uh, back uh, back in 2013 out of the at the Albion Town Hall. Yeah, I remember, I remember that. Um, I didn't go to that one, but I, I remember seeing um, promotions for that. That was it. that was a my God, that just takes that just makes you much more than older. What what was the uh, the very first um, local wrestling show that you remember going to? Like? Was it that one or was it something else? Uh, if you include the WWE, uh, if you if you include the WWE, it would have to be the uh, SmackDown Return of the Dead Man Tour in two thousand and four. It would have been ah. at the um, uh, it would have been what was called the Vodafone Arena at the time. I uh, that uh, that that building's changed its name so many times now. I think it's called the melbourne arena now um <clears throat> but before that uh, i think it was like the john kane arena it was john kane arena then then it was <clears throat> yeah you're right then there was also like uh, the hyacinth arena um but yeah but uh, like i said that that venue Mar has marvel like, stadium, stadium now isn't it marvel stadium. Mar marvel no stadium. no 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 uh, no marvel uh, different building uh this is oh. the this is the building that's like across the park from rod laver arena oh right 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 yeah 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 but Marvel Stadium is is also another venue that's uh, had had a lot of name changes over the years. From Colonial Stadium, where they had the uh, where they had the Global Warning Tour in two thousand two, uh, th then it was a high. Uh, um, Ed, uh, it was Eddie Had Stadium for a while. That's uh, right. Eddie had now we know it as oh, it was Telstra Dome before that. That's and then, the one. Yeah, that, that's what I remember. Now. And now we know it as Marvel Stadium. Oh my God. What can we say here at Melbourne? If you if you're watching uh, or listening internationally, um, it's always got, when it comes to our buildings, we, we we give it to the highest bidder. And I love the fact that it's called Marvel Stadium because you know if you've been there, that that big Iron Man statue, or sorry, uh, uh, Hulk but Hulk Smasher statue, fucking amazing to to check out every time we go to a game. Hang on, we also of we also <laughs> love our sport. <laughs> yeah, speaking of games, because you you get you gave me the the political answer. Who do you actually officially go for in the AFL? So not not who your friends are in the team. Who do you actually go for? Because Elaine got a little shitty at you for this because you kind of dodged the question. Uh, my honest answer when it comes to the AFL nowadays is I genuinely just like to enjoy a good game. But but uh, gro uh, growing up, I was a Essendon supporter, and before that. Uh, for family uh, family reasons, I was a Collingwood supporter. Oh, Jesus um, Christ. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, but um, <coughs> yeah. Now, nowadays, I'm not entirely fussed uh, just because I kind of think um, with how the uh, the game has kind of changed with you know like so many additions to the rules and stuff like that. Um, and purely, ju- uh, purely just because I like I like to see a good contest, so um, I'm not I'm not entirely f- uh, I'm not entirely fussed as far as like you know which team is my favorite kind of thing. But um, and I'll and I'll even have particular teams that I'll actually like that I actually hope to win the game when they uh, when they're playing. Like um, typically, I, I would uh, I would go for Essendon when they're playing Collingwood, um, St Kilda, uh, St Kilda, Richmond, and North Melbourne. Uh, oh just, my just God. Others. All oh, you've just ticked up all the all the the teams that I hate the most in the <laughs> AFL. Oh, but, but, if you, if, but just, if, but just if you say for, Sydney, but just if you say to f- Sydney, then, then, then this interview's over, mate. Like. Nah, 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 nah all, uh, all good on that one. The, uh, the one team that I love to, uh, the one team I, I would love to boo for fun, it's Carlton. So, oh, who doesn't? I, 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 yeah, I, uh, apologies to all the uh, all the Carlton fans out uh, out there. It's nothing personal. It's just for fun. Yeah, no apologies for me, guys, because uh, I really don't give a sh. Carlton sucks. Um, yes, Tomo, I I am directing that at you, mate. Michael Thompson for people playing at home at APW. I fucking hate Carlton, so sorry. Oh, and Richard too, because uh, you know, f- you. Um, sorry, lot, sorry, sorry, lot, I'm, I'm just uh, going on a tangent at the moment because we we talk about footy and I get very passionate about it. Um, especially when it comes to Carlton. Now, I want to ask. How did you uh, get into wrestling? Uh, because obviously, you know, we've only seen you in uh, PCW, but I, I've got, I've, I feel like it, that, that that was that, that was one one of many places you may have checked out first. Yeah. So, um, so b- back when back when I was mainly trying to pursue a career as a as a musician and actor, but I guess performance artist, I'll I'll, uh, I'll refer to that umbrella. I was also training in various different styles of martial arts, particularly in a gym called Extreme MMA in Chaston. Um, and I kind of had some little inklings when I would pop, uh, pop over to some wrestling shows um, b- uh, before I actually uh, des- uh, decided to step in. Um, I think I've been to some NAW shows. Uh, I've definitely been to a few uh, Outback Championship wrestling shows o- uh, over in Ashwood just because just it was around the corner from... Uh, from where I was, mm. um, and then there was uh, there was one time that uh, OCW had a ha- uh, had a Halloween show, uh, and Tommy Dream- uh, Tommy Dreamer was down, and they had uh, they had like a big Halloween uh, contest where whoever the best dressed fan was got to be uh, got to be um, managing Tommy uh, Tommy Dreamer in his match against uh, the Slave Blade himself, Slade Mercer, that night. Wow, um, and and, uh, and th- this was really cool because, um, like, uh, um, I guess anybody would be able to figure out, you know, who who I dressed up on on that night. I uh, pro- uh, probably wouldn't need to say, but just for the heck of it, I dressed up as Michael Jackson. Oh, I thought and... you were gonna say. I thought you were gonna say Humphrey B. Bear. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Imagine, imagine everyone's shocked, right? But, um. Uh, but then Tommy Dreamer, um, during the whole selection process, uh, he goes all like, "Hey, can you do any Michael Jackson moves?" And uh, and then I'm all like, "Yeah, can I get in the ring and do it?" And then he's uh, and he's like, "Well, if you can get over the guardrail, then sure." So this is kind of my uh, Wonka factory moment. Um, yeah, yeah, actually stepping into a, uh, into a ring for the first time. Uh, you know, you know when the uh, when the inner child. Uh, your inner child just gets all excited, um, being like, "Oh my gosh, this is so cool!" Yeah. Um, and then, uh, and then, to- uh, Tommy gives me a mic. I'm just s- uh, belting out uh, Billy Jean and Acapella, do- doing all the moves, all the all the spins, the moonwalk, the toe stand, and all that jazz. And um, not only was the place go- uh, going nuts for it, uh, we ended up getting a Michael Jackson chant at a wrestling show, uh, which-, which to me was unbelievable. So I ended up being one out of two people um, that uh, that ended up uh, winning that contest. The other one was uh, a, a dear friend of mine. Uh, well, a dear friend of mine nowadays um, that I just met that night, Mia, uh, who was dressed as Jeff the Killer, I believe. 
Now, the most importantly, is there any footage of this? Because I want to see it now. I'm 100% sure that there, that there is somewhere. Uh, it would have been aired on Channel 31 at, at some point. Um, mm. Or uh, or maybe we would have to ask um, the management over at Battle Cha uh, Battle Championship Wrestling uh, about uh, footage about that one because because um, that because uh, that happened like a decade ago. So, um, but but then but uh, but then also further along because uh, I also knew um, a guy that was working at the MMA gym that I was training at uh, training at at the time. Uh, better known as the Nightmare Chris Trio, a, a, a former PCW state champion, um, and a guy uh, and a guy who had um, uh, been around the scene like quite uh, quite a bit before uh, before I got to step in, and a and a former member of the of the uh, of Supremacy. Yeah, he. Um, uh, I kind of just uh, I kind of just asked him about uh, PCW because one of the guys I was tra uh, training with was like, oh, "Are you like wrestling? That uh, this this guy over here is a wrestler." Um, so that was kind of like a link to PCW kind of thing. And then when I kind of, I kind of went crazy and decided to give pro wrestling a go. And it was just a question of which wrestling school would logistically be the best for me to go to. Cause I kind of knew somebody in a few different places at the time. Mm. Wow. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm just surprised that out of all the, uh, all the people that got you, you know, to the dance was Chris Trio. I, would, I wouldn't have thought about that. It's uh, it's amazing how uh, how small the world is, because um, because uh, even before that, it could have it could have been someone like uh, jo uh, Josh Redfield who sort of uh, who sort of introduced me to um new age uh, new age wrestling at, at that time, or mm. um, uh, or uh, or it could have even or it could have even been could it could have been anywhere else it could have been anywhere else that time, but on that uh. Uh, on that faithful July night in um, uh, back in 2015, I ended up signing up to the to the PCW Academy, um, and then the rest is history. Yeah. Well, tell tell me about your your first um, first uh, what do you call it? lesson in in uh, at PCW's Academy. How did it go? What exactly detailed in that first session, and uh, how sore were you the next morning? Um, I don't, I don't so much remember my first official, uh, my first official class. I mainly just remember, um, the first, the first two nights, uh, that, that I did training there. <clears throat> uh, but back then we called these assessment classes and these were, uh, these were run in two different nights by, um, half the, uh, half the members of the supremacy. Uh, first night was, I think it was Nash Archer who uh, who took my first session, and then it was um, then it was Tone Philippe mm. who uh, who took the other one, um, and then the, uh, a lot of the a lot of the fundamental stuff was quite similar, but in its own way different to a lot uh, to the martial arts training that I had already been exposed to at the time, and I honestly what uh, the uh, the next day after each uh, after each session I honestly wasn't that sore just because. I guess I'd already been kind of calloused to uh, being slammed around on a, on a mat and um, and taking hits um, every, uh, every now and then. So um, I guess compared to most compared to most people who get into pro wrestling and uh, and um, get slammed around for the first time, um, I, uh, I was a bit more. I would say I was more physically calloused and less sore. Just only just in comparison to others. Wow. Well, that like, I'm really surprised to hear that. But also, like, considering what you know, what you're really said, I'm not surprised uh, that you you did martial arts before all this, because you know I can see it. Um, but also not being not being that sort, that's that's an accomplishment because everyone I've had on the show, um, and everyone who I've ever really met, uh, in the wrestling industry, have always said, "Oh, that first session, pretty rough." I'm just like, well, you know, you're doing the fundamentals. There's nothing completely different. But you're it. Um, I think that's why you're a star because you, you took it like a champ and you didn't get really a thought. Oh, no. Um, how long before you got into uh, the ring yourself? Uh, I, I, yeah, if I remember correctly, did you debut as um, you know in a rumble or did you de debut just as a as like a side character or something? I can't, I can't quite remember. No, I de uh, I debuted <coughs> about <coughs> I debuted about three uh, I think about three and a half months after. <coughs> um uh, after i had uh, after i had started training it was at a it was at a pcw slam mm. um at the uh, at the Halland, uh, back when back when pcw were doing the um 
uh, I'll call it the tri uh, the trifecta of venues. Um, so uh, so this uh, this PCW Slam was back at uh, the Hall uh, back at Hallam Secondary College in a, yeah. uh, in a, in a theater, which is. <laughs> for uh, for me, it's probably a very ideal place to start because it's kind of like um, meshing a couple of different uh, worlds together, um, sort of thing. Because you know, it's a wrestling ring inside a theater. Yeah. Um, what, what, what more? What more could I want? Um, and it was uh, it was a four on one over the top rope match. Um, so it was myself. Um, he went by the name Taurus at the time. And then, a, and then a couple of, uh, and then a couple of weeks later, he uh, he got called. Uh, he, uh, sorry, a couple of weeks later, he was referred to as Carl Killer. And now we, uh, and now we all, are, and then not long after that, he uh, he became Socks, and we, uh, and and then he became became the uh, the man we now uh, <laughs> we, we now know and love, uh, Carl Grove. I forgot those two names. <laughs> oh God. Oh wait, there's oh you, wait, there's more. You, oh wait, there's more. There, uh, there was also um, uh, so bes uh, besides myself and Taurus, there was also uh, Rob Grace, just Rob Grace, and Mister Big. I thought I I thought I wasn't there the, when you the moment the moment you said Mister Big, I remember this match very well because. Then, uh, then, then can, was, you, uh, can you tell me who uh, who our opponent was? Oh, I can't remember now. Who was the opponent? What? I don't know. I don't know why. I'm pretty sure I'm wrong, but, but for some reason, my brain's going Alex Titan. For some no, reason. I've uh, I have uh, I have never been in the ring with uh, Alex Titan, and uh, I don't uh, I don't actually think I've ever been in the same building as him. But um, it was, uh, a, but it was a taller bloke, wasn't it? Well, um, I'm trying to remember the. Oh, no. I'll give you. Uh, I'll give you a clue. At this point in time, he had a singular name. Yeah. Nah, I can't. I don't know. I don't know. I've drawn a blank. At, as I can, a, as I, a good, I, I can see. Name. I can see him, but I can't think of his name. It was. Uh, it was Apocalypse. Ah, <laughs> uh, that uh, that, uh, that face says it all. But uh, but that uh, but that's fine. There has been a lot of uh, there has been a lot of wrestling that has uh, that has happened at that uh, at that time. But then I I kind of feel like um I kind of feel like my first like real big moment on a wrestling show after that was at the Destiny Battle Royal uh, a couple of weeks later, mm. <clears throat> and we kind of had a I kind of had a pop versus rock uh, kind of moment with. Uh, with uh, with a guy named James Marshall. Oh, hang on. Speaking of, speaking of uh, old bitch face, uh, make sure to use the hashtag James Marshall on your fans. Let's make it happen. I know I've been saying since the start of the year I'm not going to make that joke anymore, but I f***ing love it. <laughs> Sorry. Um, yeah. Now he 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 said uh, that you did you had the pleasure of chucking him out. My question is, when you guys met up again, was it last year or the year before at that um, charity event? Oh, it, the charity. It might the have been. It might, have been it might have been last. It might have been last. I kind of feel like it might have been last year, but don't quote. Uh, don't quote me on it. I could be wrong. Mm. Um, I would definitely. Yeah, I would definitely have to go back to the tape. Uh, back to the tapes to sort of um uh, to sort of find out when that was. But um, but uh, but yeah, I uh. We do, uh, every time we've uh, every time I've crossed paths with him, we've always uh, kind of notioned the idea ever since that uh, Destiny Battle Royal, or the uh, or as I call it, the the debut of the Moonwalk Leg Drop to, um, uh, to to try to get an actual pop versus rock thing one on one on one. James Marshall, let's go! I would love to see you two uh, duke it out one more time, whether it be you know PCW Alpha uh, Adrenaline. BCW, WWE, AEW. I don't give a. F I I want to see that. I I I reckon because I reckon you two have really good chemistry. I reckon that would be a really good match for you two to have have have, have a go at it. I, I I really do. If anyone in Victoria can book that match, please. You know, here's you know, let's do. Uh, here's my wallet. Um, do what you will with it. Make it happen, please. Um, Josh Redfield, another dr another dream match that we've uh. 
that I've had in the books for a very long time. Uh, it's yourself as well. So yeah, anywhere, anytime, let's go. Now, speaking speaking of uh, of Josh, because you did mention before, tell me the story. How did you guys how did you guys meet? Because I didn't know that you guys knew each other. So this is this is brand new news for me. I met uh, I met him at <clears throat> I met him at Steel Resol- uh, at Steel Resolution um, when. Uh, it, it was basically one of those night, uh, nights out where I tagged along to uh, a, re- a wrestling show with um, uh, j- just uh, just with a couple of um, a couple of mutual friends, so, uh, sort of things. So, yeah. Long long story short, just uh, just mutual friends in- introduced us at a uh, at a big event of his because he won a battle royal that night to crown himself the number one contender to the NAW championship. Mm. Uh, and the, uh, the main event of that one, I believe, was um, JXT, who was the champion at the time, and he had lost the title in a steel cage match to Steve Valick, I think his name was. Slick Steve, I think, was it was uh, well, what he went by towards the end, I think, if I remember correctly. Yeah, but no, uh, no, but no, I no, could we talk, we talk, I could be wrong. Same, that was only. Uh, I, I could be I could be wrong. That was only my first wrestling show, so we would have to um, uh, we we would definitely have uh, I would have to um try to have a look back or Google it just to find that out. But uh, <laughs> one person, but one person and that would definitely remember um that would definitely remember that night vividly is uh, JXC. Oh man, I um I'm now I'm now getting dollar signs in my eyes because I I, I want to see this match between you, Josh, and, and I really call him by shooting at him. Um, and Marshall, I reckon the three of you, three different styles. I reckon. I, I reckon, I'm not saying this to kiss your ass either. Okay, I'm just going to say put this out there. Having you three in the ring would be the equivalent of Styles, Daniel, Joe. I reckon. You, I reckon you guys could pull off a, a style match like they did. Yeah, that's a, uh, that's the thing about combat sports. Uh, styles do make fights. So, um, but, uh, but yeah, I've always been, I've always been one that would, um, uh, step on, uh, step up on my own stage against absolutely anybody. Mm-hmm. Um, and a lot of the time I couldn't really, ca- uh, couldn't really care less how, uh, how big or small, uh, small they are either. Like, um, like last year, I would probably even say I was the, uh, I was the giant slayer after all the, uh, all the, all the battles I've had with guys like, um, both the Marauders and, um, uh, Mason, masonry i think he goes but uh, he goes by now he was mason jaws at the time mm. and um there was there was one oh yeah joey curtis was uh was another one mm. i just but before we before we continue i just want to i just want to um get your take on it because he said that you enjoyed every minute of doing this did you enjoy throw literally throwing out um james marshall over the top rope and out of pcw <laughs> well, uh, well, to be uh, well, to be fair, at that uh, at that time, I uh, I would not have known if he was uh, uh, if he was cu- uh, coming back or not. Uh, I just I just remember at uh, at that time he was um uh, he was just somebody I needed to throw over the top rope um to uh, to try to win a battle royal. So um yeah, wh- whatever happened whatever happened after that um. I, uh, I guess he, uh, I guess him not coming back for quite a while. That's uh, that's entirely that's entirely on him. Oh, uh, oh well, well we, we tried we tried to get the answer. And just if you guys are listening, not watching, Lockie had a massive smile on his face just then. So I reckon he I reckon he really enjoyed it. He's just too too modest to say it. Now I want to talk about how you became Lockie because obviously I know your real name, um, but talk me through because originally you were. Um, was it just was it just Lucky Moonwalker, or I feel like there was a, you had another name before? No, uh, no, um, uh, no, uh, no. The uh, the uh, the name on the, the name on the birth certificate is Lucky Moonwalker, and and it's been, and it's definitely been that way since uh, uh since uh, since uh, the good old career beginning of twenty fifteen. Hmm. Well, where, where where did the name come from exactly? Obviously, you know, be, being an, an MJ fan, um, where did your parents come up with that name? Well, like I said, it was on the uh, it was on the birth certificate. So, um, 
Uh, I guess, uh, I guess, uh, I guess, uh, I guess mother, uh, mother and Papa Moonwalker came, uh, came up with the name and put uh, put it on the birth certificate. So I, I just want to know where did Lockie come from? Was it was it like from a like a, a family friend or was it uh, you know it's like oh we just like that name Lockie, you know it's like it's. But I remember when I first saw your name on the bill, Lockie Moonwalker. Interesting. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. I uh, I guess maybe um I guess maybe my dad might have had some or. or could have been either of my parents might have had uh, so, uh some sort of background in uh, background in grappling so um because i kind of did realize that even the name uh Lockie is an uh, is an unusual spelling compared to uh compared to some uh somebody named lachlan which uh, which would typically be like uh you know l-a-c-h-l-a-n or or the use of the o's or something like that but um but I guess that could apply to uh, maybe them having, like I said, a grappling a grappling background. So, yeah. Um, so, uh, so yeah, they uh, they probably knew a uh, they probably knew a wrist lock from a wristwatch, so to you speak. Know, you know, I'll be fair honest. I remember when I first saw the name. You know, I, I pictured like this massive bogan with like a mullet, and you know, have like may maybe just have a Michael Jackson hand uh, uh, hand glove. And that was it. That's all I was assuming um, that they had. I don't know why, but that's that was what I first thought. And when he came out, I went, oh, okay, he likes he likes Michael Jackson. Good for him. Um, and then uh, yeah, I was, I was I was instantly instantly impressed because I, I, I like I've been saying for years, I, I I think you're absolutely amazing in the ring, especially um, when you know when Billy Jean uh, gets played gets played and uh, is it hit my music and bang, I love it. I um in, in saying that though I I um one of my best friends Jan the piano man who is probably the biggest Michael Jackson lover I've ever met um I sent him a video of you doing doing that and his only criticism criticism was right um just the the put the um the placement of your feet when you're doing the moonwalk because he 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 he, do, he does it he, like this is and this is going back I think this was in your first year if I remember correctly um. And he's like, oh, the position is not just a little bit off. He puts his, puts a little pressure there. He's got it. I'm like, just enjoy what I just sent you. Like, how many people can you can you say actually did a moonwalk in the fucking ring? Like, it was yeah, that, yeah, that, that's the thing though. Like, when uh, whenever I watch any, whenever I watch any of my stuff back, and I end up getting to uh, the the part where I go for a moonwalk leg drop, I also cringe a little bit at the moonwalk. But understand, understandably though. A, a wrestler a wrestling ring isn't really like any other sort of surface that is uh easy uh, easy to moonwalk on uh kind of thing just because um just because a lot of the time the the wrestling mat actually tends to drag uh drag along with your foot hmm. uh, kind of thing r rather than sort of stay where uh stay where it is so you can kind of like gl uh, glide across so um it, it uh, so it actually it, it actually does kind of like blow my mind uh, blow my mind a little bit or make me wonder how people like Santana Jackson who is a uh, a, a, a complete Michael Jackson impersonator who also who is also a wrestler and uh, and legit a legitimate badass kind of thing. Mm. Um, uh, just uh, just seeing him do, uh, do mo uh, moonwalks effortless, effortlessly in the ring uh, makes makes me wonder. Especially, uh, also makes me wonder what kind of shoes he wrestles in too. Yeah, when you when uh, like I've I've been in the ring several times now, and I just like when, when you do it, like how the hell do you do it? So like I whenever I'm um, especially at Alpha, I'm on it on the on the ramp and everything. Like I'm trying to trying to move, and uh, because I, I I don't lift my feet up too well, I always get this little squeak when I walk. It's very 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 tough at the surface. So you you, do, you make it you make it look very very poor. So you know, kudos to you. Um, because we're, we're we're really running out of time. I really want to talk about um your engagement and what happened. Um, I know she's probably in the background. Do you want to go grab her for a second? Because she said she was going to interrupt at some time. I don't know where she is now. She's uh, uh she uh, she's not here. Uh, she's not here at this uh, at this time. Ah, that's all right. But no, t t talk me through because you, you, cause that you, it's it was so romantic what you did. Talk, talk, talk through the whole process. Yeah, so uh, so we are uh, uh, pre uh, pretty much like anybody in our age groups. Uh, we are, we are Harry Potter fans, and there was a thing in uh, along the Mornington Pen uh, Peninsula of Melbourne uh, called Mount Martha. They had the 
ha- uh, Harry Potter Forbidden Forest experience, which uh, which I, which I kind of figured would be a great place to set the scene. Mm. And uh, I I honestly think the only thing that I was kind of nervous about was actually making sure that uh, somebody was there to be able to document the moment because you know you know you know how life goes uh, and especially as wrestlers we we don't really we don't really live in like you know oh. minutes or times or even calendar days or anything like that we live in moments so i yeah, uh, yeah when a mo- uh, when a moment gets mi- uh, missed or it's not i guess documented um, it kind of sucks because you want to have something to like you know um, you kind of want something like a hard copy to um, look back on it ra- rather than just like try, uh, try to store your memory up here and then end up forgetting it later on. Yeah. So, um, so I did a fair bit of wait, uh, waiting around uh, a little, a little bit here and there for, uh, uh, for a friend of ours to kind of bump, uh, bump into us to, to sort of catch at the moment. So we end up walking through the whole for, uh, uh, forbidden forest experience and, um, Cast a bunch of spells, uh, bow to a, bow to a hippogriff, all uh, all that uh, all that fun stuff, and then um, we bump into our friend, and then we go over to a, an area just to uh, just to pose for a photo, and then uh, our friend, uh, be, uh, being a uh, being a wonderful camera person, um, has uh, has the uh, has the uh, has the phone ready to go. Um, Instead, instead of taking, instead of taking a po- instead of taking a photo, of course they're filming, um, and then we, and then we have our uh, we have we have our pose, and then I and then I basically tell uh, Elaine Hope that um, that the pretty much the two things that I'm looking forward to the most are t- uh, taking uh, taking on um, the world of pro wrestling with you and uh, and t- uh, and taking on everything else outside of the ring with her. Um, a, a, a little, a little bit of blah 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 about uh, about how she means uh, means to me and stuff like that. And then eventually, uh, we're at a we're in a seated position at this point. I get uh, I get off the the log that we were sitting on, down down one uh, down on one knee. No, um, pull uh, pull the uh, pull the bo- uh, pull the box out uh, with a ring in it. I open it up and I just asked, I just asked her, uh, "Will you marry me?" And she was just just in uh, just in complete shock. Um. Yeah, yeah, we've uh, yeah, we both kind of still are, um, kind of processing it. I get, uh, I guess, but uh, but ultimately, the the biggest thing that I was happiest about, uh, when it came to uh, the big proposal was just maintaining that element of surprise because we've had we've had so many people asking, you know, uh, you know, when, uh, when are you got when are you guys going to get married? I, and and the whole like you know, oh, you guys are so cute together, blah blah blah. Even like. Even social media had been um, pu- uh, put, uh, putting up all these like all, all this we- all this wedding and romantic stuff on uh, on the news feed, and it's, and it's like, okay, okay, we get it, internet. You're trying to tell us something. Well, you were together for what five years or something like that, was it? We uh, we've um, we've known each other, we've known each other for uh, we've known each other for fi- uh, for five years, and then. Uh, and, and then kind of been hanging out around that time. I would probably say we've only been dating for uh, a, cu- a couple or a few or a few years. We um, just because we weren't really sure about dates or anything like that. We consider last year's Halloween horror date where um, uh, where we had the big Barbie entrance or what? Yeah, what we- for, for, that, for those wondering and those are watching, here's the here's the photo of um, these two lovebirds. Um, because also, and she told me to tell you this as well, she will never let you forget that you got her to wear that dress. Um, what's right? So I, I think she looks lovely in the dress. And if I'm missing watching, I'm just saying that as a good post. Um, why does she hate it? Because I, I think, I think, she, I think, you, I think you got, gave her a good dress. Uh, your your guess is your guess is as good as mine. Uh, because I also I also thought she looked stunning in that dress as well. Um, but, uh, maybe maybe because the shoulders were all uh, were all like puffy and stuff uh, and stuff like that. I'm not. Oh, into, I'm, that, that, that didn't matter. She looked gorgeous in it. Like, just, just I completely I com- I completely agree. I com- I completely agree. But yeah, no, I'm I'm very happy for you too. Um, I got a, I'm gonna be a bit. I got a little teary when I saw it. I, I was like, I saw it like, oh, what's the Harry Potter thing? And then all of a sudden, I scrolled down and I was like, 
Oh my god. Oh my god. He fucking did it. He finally did it. Because literally, the last time I saw you face to face, what what do you remember exactly what I said to you? Uh not uh, not you, exactly, you, but it it was on the lines of me saying, <laughs> "When the fuck are you going to put a ring on that thing?" Because <laughs> um, I I I like when you guys told me your story, I went Bloody hell, like, that, that is a long time to be together, like, even though not, like, not, unof not officially, but, um, been a long time to be, like, you get, you gotta put a ring on that, I'm, 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 I'm proud of you for doing it, mate, well done. Yeah, uh, yeah, and I, uh, I'm a sucker for a good cliche, or at least, like, some sort of, uh, some sort of spectacular fashion to do it on as well, like, Oh, but you um, did, you did it in really good form, though. Yeah, ju yeah. Just because with with this sort of thing, um, you kind of uh, you kind of want to look back on it, um, oh. and uh, and actually kind of be like proud of the moment, sort of sort of thing, uh, instead of just kind of like instead of just leaving any uh, asterisks um, b uh, behind, kind of thing, or or even think, oh, you know, this could have been better. Yeah. Um, but no, I was uh, I was very happy with uh, with uh, with how it turned out, and um, and just. Uh, and I basically got the reaction I wanted uh, from Il uh, Elaine as well. So, so, oh, I, can't, uh, so yeah, I, can't, I can't wait. I can't wait for you to uh, uh, start having kids. And you know, they put that photo. They put that photo on you know there. They go, you know, what one of your kids is going, Daddy? What the? Why is there pumpkins and stuff in the back? Because they probably won't even understand. Like, because like unless you, unless um you were there or remember those those times, they probably don't even remember. Because like the the actual photos, so you can't really tell us Harry Potter unless you were. Um, unless you were there, yeah. Unless you were there, so there. Yeah, I don't. I think. I think it's gonna be great, great, great story for you kids to tell your kids, and um, can't wait for the wedding month. Now, I am not going to ask you what you think is cool because I've already been told by you, by your missus, and there is a story to go behind it. So, just like I said on Elaine's uh, episode, I nearly called you by a shoot name by then, but be very careful when I say when I say this, Lucky. What Lockie believes uh, is cool, and I have to admit, I, I I think it's cool too, is James Bond. And uh, you went to the James Bond Museum. And what happened? Tell me every excruciating detail. It doesn't matter how cheesy and, and especially it doesn't matter how cringy it is. I want to know the story. What happened? Ah, uh, I, I I'm actually I'm actually oh. that uh, that you brought up the fact that I am a James Bond fan. Like, uh, for for anybody that comes along to any of the uh, any of the shows I do, whether it be professional championship wrestling, Mel uh, Melbourne City wrestling, or uh, Riot City wrestling, or anywhere anywhere else that uh, that you may uh, that you may see the artist at, um, where I would do I guess kind of my own version of the uh, gun bar uh, the old gun barrel sequence. So. Back in 2012, they had the uh, it was the 50 uh, the 50 year anniversary of uh, basically Doctor No or the um, I would say the Bond film franchise. And uh, in Melbourne, they had the uh, Designing 007 exhibition. Mm. And 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 me being an absolute stan of the uh, 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 of the James Bond franchise, um, I was like a kid in a candy store, just going uh, going completely uh, completely nuts. Go, uh, Basically, be, uh, being all, uh, all like, oh, oh my gosh, it's it, it's this from this movie. Pretty much the entire time, it, it kind of got to the point where um, I even uh, I even ended up having my own tour group behind me with, uh, without even uh, without even knowing about it. But then it got to a point where we end up in this massive room, um, and, and it and it was kind of dark with uh, with very specific things that were um, that were kind of spotlighted. Um, and in uh, and in the middle of the room there was a, a there was a casino table. Um, so this so this is basically the uh, um, I, I guess what we we would probably call the casino royale room. Yeah. Um, be, uh, because by, uh, because by this by this point in time, uh, uh, fifty year anniversary it would have been the year that Skyfall had come out. So we were we were only about. Uh, maybe maybe halfway or at least three fifths um, three fifths of the Daniel Craig era. <laughs> so um, and then, uh, and then I'm looking uh, and then I'm looking uh, looking at all the different places on the table and uh, seeing all the different outfits and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, I don't have I don't have any recollection of this part, but appa but apparently I had corrected the exhibit 
on the positioning of particular uh, particular outfits and characters at the Casino Royale table. So then, uh, so, so then a staff member had um, <laughs> had had gone back uh, to double check with uh, with some of their <laughs> colleagues, yeah, um, and to uh, and to double check the uh, and to of course pr- uh, fact check or proof check the uh, the accuracy of where I believed these characters were, and it turns out Lockie was right. Oh my god! How long was that exhibition out before you came and corrected it? Was it like a, a few weeks? It's like that's embarrassing that a fan out of all people and the whole like like experts and everything has got it wrong and a fan had to correct them. Um, I'm uh, I honestly couldn't <coughs> I could uh, I couldn't really tell you be, uh, because I I couldn't um I couldn't really t- uh, tell the date of like when I went or how long. Uh, the exhibit had already been out, but by, uh, by the time I got there, was I mainly just remember that it was, um, it was during the summer of 2012. Yeah. All right. Because you are a James Bond fan, I got to ask firstly, what is it about Bond that you love so much? Because I, I mean, I think he's cool, but I'm not like an over big fan. Like, if I was to pick one, one movie that I love out of all of them, it's probably going to be From Russia to Love or Dr. No, to be honest, because those are you know, short comments. So you're a Connery guy? Uh, no, 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 no. I didn't say I was a Connery guy. But we'll get to that in a second. But what what, what is it about um, about Bond? I, it might have been... Uh... <clears throat> it might have been how I kind of got uh, kind of got hooked to it, uh, uh, kind of got hooked into it. Like I definitely remember um, be, uh, being a kid and pl- uh, playing GoldenEye with um, uh, with either friends or family on Nintendo sixty four, and then and then eventually um, eventually stumbling across the movie called The Spy Who Loved Me, and uh, and being a kid, uh, being a kid, I was all like. Wait a minute! Wait a minute! I know this guy, and then uh, and then back when Channel Seven had their um uh, had their 007 mo- uh, movie nights, I think it was once a yep. week, and then just uh, just recording those uh, those movies on video and just rewatching it over and over again. Um, it, yeah, I think it might have been might have might have just been enjoying those uh, enjoying those uh, movies in uh, in that kind of fashion uh, mm-hmm. that that. Really, uh, that really got me into Bond. So I guess it's purely just nostalgic. Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. What uh, What is your go to uh, Bond movie? Mm, um, I guess it probably depends on it depends on the day or the mood or, or the mood or something like that. But um, uh, but I would always tell anybody that my uh, that my all-time favorite Bond film would either be The World Is Not Enough or Goldeneye. Okay. Oh, um, yeah. And uh, and uh, so uh, obviously I am a Pierce Brosnan guy, but I do believe, uh, but I do believe that in terms of, um, in terms of the traditional portrayal of the role of James Bond, uh, Pierce Brosnan is one hundred percent my guy. Um, okay. But, but uh, but as far uh, but uh, but as far as like uh, the best James Bond of all time, um, especially because of how relative that his portrayal made James Bond, I would have to go with Daniel Craig. Oh God, just ugh, just digging it into the heart right now. God, um, I know you think I'm a I'm a, I'm a Connery man. Um, I'm only just based on the two movies. Or only just based on the movies that uh, that you had said before. Yeah, I will fight tooth and nail because I've had, I've had multiple arguments with people on this one. Uh, a friend of mine by the name of Josh um, kind of agree with me, but he's a he's a Connery man. I have always been, and it's because I loved him in the same. Because I not because I'm old or anything. Because that was on Nick at Night when I was a kid. Um, Roger Moore. I've always loved Roger Moore. I don't know what it is about about, about Moore's performance, whether it be the, the elements of having a little bit of comedy as Bond well being, you know, a badass and everything like that. But I thought he was the Bond. I I I, oh, I can't say anything about it. If I was to go for a second, I would agree with you. Daniel Craig would be it. But Brosnan, I don't know what it is about Pierce. I, I think it's because, you know, the Remington Steel days. Yes, that's how f***ed and all I am people. Um, I only see him as Remington Steel. I don't see him as James Bond. I don't know what it is. Even though the characters are slightly similar when it comes to 
a few things. It's it, I, I can't give it out, can't get that out of my head to be honest. Fair enough. I mean, I mean, like um, Roger Roger Moore is a solid choice, and there is a reason why he had been billed to play James Bond for like se- uh, for seven movies. Mm. So, um, but, uh, but yeah, I've uh, never uh, I've never really had a never really had a um, I guess like a neg- a negative opinion about um uh, about Roger Moore's port- uh, portrayal as Bond. Mm. Um, I, I've I've always en- I've always enjoyed um enjoyed uh, enjoyed watching him in the role. Um, but yeah, I guess if I had to have favorites, uh, if I had to have favorites, it would be, uh, it would pretty much be Pierce Brosnan and then the tie for second between Craig and Connery. Very good. Very good. Um, what is the go to Bond song? I've got two in mind that come to mind when I, when I think of it. Um, I don't, uh, I don't exactly have a go to, uh, I don't have a go to Bond song just because they're also, uh, uh, they're all pretty much so good. Oh, they are. Um, like, there's not, there's not one week one animal. And I, I, I will fight people in the comments if, if they, if they say otherwise. Sorry, guys, but I, I seriously think that, that, that they have the best themes in the world. Sorry. Yep. Yeah, uh, yeah. Like before, uh, before music film clips were a thing, we had yeah. Bond movies. Right. So, um, um, so as far as as far as go to songs, uh. A go-to Bond song that I uh, that I had been, I guess, revisiting a fair bit lately, just because of how br- uh, brilliant, um, it, uh, how brilliantly orchestrated it was, was uh, "License to Kill." Oh, that is very great. good, very good. Espe- especially, especially with how brilliantly that uh, that baseline is done, um, and, and really, and really complements um, e- everything else. I, I, I. I... I don't. I know my two are very modern, but I think this is like one was done by a band who was just on top of the world at the time, and I just I don't know what it was. I used it as the um, theme song to the Grey's episode, and the other one I I don't know what it is. But I just think it's the oh, it, it just always gives me chills. Even what, even though the movie was kind of meh yeah, like that, um, um, you know, I still love this song. The first song that comes to mind that I will always go to, I always revisit, which I use for the great. The world is not enough by garbage. Um, mm-hmm. my God, just just the way it starts, and then you know, and then the the, the, the guitar do, 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 do. Like, like it's oh, I'm I'm, I'm getting goosebumps just, just thinking about it right now. And then the other one, um, and I'm sorry if I'm going to piss off anybody, but let's let's be honest, it was not a fair outing for for Mr. Craig. The Quantum of Solace um, song, uh, another another day, uh, another way to die. Why Alicia Keys and Jack Black, uh, Jack Black, Jack, Jack White. White. Sorry, um, how the hell do I get those two confused? Like two completely different people. Um, I think that I think you know having Alicia and Jack on that on that um, track was just oh God's gift to God's gift to uh, James Bond. It was great. Yeah, I uh, I would absolutely say uh, I would absolutely say that uh, that song is one hundred percent a banger. Mm. Um, yeah, and pre- pretty much all the Daniel Craig themes have been uh, have been absolutely brilliant from uh, from Chris Cornell to uh, as you said Alicia Keys and Jack White to Adele Skyfall, absolutely oh. brilliant. And then mm. um, uh, and then we've uh, then we've had uh, who did, who did Spectre again? Um, oh, uh... so uh, yeah, uh, Sam Smith. Yes. Um, yep, writings on the wall, and then Billie Eilish with a uh, absolutely unbelievable uh, chart of um, No Time to Die, for, uh, especially for the end of uh, Daniel uh, Daniel Craig's era as Bond. Um, <laughs> yeah, J- uh, just the uh, just the whole arc of his run is just beautiful. Could you imagine? I, I just got this really bad <laughs> bad picture in my head. Could you imagine Billy Irish's um, uh, bad guy being played at the start of uh, of any of the of uh, Death of Craig? I reckon that would be the most funny thing that I, I'd ever see for Craig to do. I had never, I had never actually seen that ever, only because uh, I reckon Billy Eilish would be a fantastic crooner. Like after hearing her, oh yeah, um, after after hearing her uh, in memoriam performance at the Oscars one year. Mm. Um, I I honestly thought that like jazz ballad sort of style really suits her voice. She can she could do amazing um work with probably um oh, I've forgotten her name now. Uh, the one who's saying don't know why. Um 
Oh, my God. What's her name? Um, I've seen her in concert too. Uh, her dad, her dad was the guy uh, who did stuff with the Beatles. Kids, Google it. Oh my God! Good to know. Yeah. Oh. I can't remember her name. I'm gonna talk it up. Yes, yes, I am a professional. I just unfortunately have a really, really bad um, memory when it comes to things. What, so was, this, what was the song called again? Don't know. Why. Don't know why. Hang on. Was it Nora Jones? That's it, Nora Jones. That's what I'm thinking. Her, her, and Nora Jones. Um, maybe even Josh Stone, for those who remember who Josh Stone is. Um, three very amazing voices, and very, very amazing songwriters as well. I reckon that if you got those three in a room to have a to make a jazz album, I smell. The, I smell. I smell um, a lot of money on the table. Uh, oh, no, sorry, not smell. I, I see a lot of money on the table because that could be absolutely amazing. I think we're going to have a really good uh, idea here. Lockie. maybe we should get in contact with those three ladies and get them to make an album, mate. Right? It's, it's a it's a it's a uh, it's a hell of an idea, and I and I wouldn't be surprised if they all scored Grammys for it. Yeah. All right. Well, we've come to the end of this episode. I'm sorry for those who want to uh, learn more about Lockie, but we got on a bit of a tangent. But also, we learned how incredibly sweet and uh, romantic this man is, and how much he loves James Bond. So I think that was incredibly cool. Lockie, where can we find you on all your socials? Uh, I'll just put it all down to uh, one uh, one simple link, and uh, all it is is just a link tree. Uh, uh, it, it'll 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 be uh, right here or uh, or wherever th uh, this guy puts um uh, put, puts it up for display and, uh, and and of course the the hyperlink and all that all that jazz. But yeah, all my socials are ba uh, basically basically all the usuals: uh, fa Facebook, Instagram, um, X, X, I guess. Uh, even for, uh, even from time to, uh, even from time to time, I might uh, do some Twitch streaming here and there. Uh, YouTube is also there, but then you'll also be able to find uh, all my merchandise sort of stuff, um, which is ma uh, mainly pro wrestling tees, or um, or if it's stuff like eight by tens, can pretty much get it uh, get a uh, straight from me at a show, or as soon as I can figure the uh, the interwebs of get, uh, getting those out. Otherwise, um, and then as far as uh, as far as being able to watch me, uh, I'm I'm usually over at a professional championship wrestling um every now every now and then uh, uh melbourne city wrestling especially after winning an award there last year mm -hmm. and um and uh yeah i'll def i'll definitely be uh, popping up uh popping up um in other places here uh here and there as well so uh wherever the artiste is stay tuned well lucky i wish you luck mate and i can't wait to have you on the show again we'll definitely have to talk about your full career because there's a lot i want to unpack with your career uh I remember there was something we wanted, I wanted to mention, but obviously we didn't get time to do it, so we'll have to make, it, make sure we get that on the episode. So, Lockie, thank you for being a part of one of the school. It, it has been an absolute pleasure. And in the meantime, in between time for everybody else, keep your uh, keep your voices warm, warmed up and be able to raise it and just uh, simply make it loud. With that being said, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to the show wherever you get your podcast. Want more from one of the school? Make sure to check out the YouTube channel where you can find the latest episodes of Love Laying Around, The Action, and of course the podcast. And don't forget to follow What of the School on all socials. You can be found at What of the School. Keep that support coming. And until next time, from me and Lockie, we'll catch you on the next one. Peace. <laughs>